Good morning, and welcome to another asinine episode of Diatribes, from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your fanatic of fatalism, Voice of Doom. Hello, and good morning. I'm starting to say good and front of the times of day because it's traditional and just simply because I feel we're doomed doesn't mean that we can't have a good morning. I mean, I don't want to be a downer. And I'm realizing that I can expand on my last episode of Nothing Is Real because I'm putting together my ensemble and primping in front of the computer and I'll show you I, I have a wardrobe room and everything I'll give you a peek of my surroundings Somewhere. so when I say wardrobe room I'm not just making up stuff I don't make up very much at all Sometimes I put on makeup, but so I'm primping in front of the computer and going, I'm getting ready for the show, and it's like, I mean, my reality must is convoluted. I mean, nobody's watching this, and yet I'm acting like I'm, you know, Johnny Carson, you know, going through my, you know, various outfits to see what I'll wear today and what I'll talk about and getting ready, and I realize my reality is not anybody else's either. Right in there with everybody else, as far as not knowing what real is. I mean, some of the staff even told me that, you know, Mr. Announcer wasn't really, you know, wasn't real. And, you know, I had to laugh. Because they're not seeing what I'm seeing. So, I wanted to go over a few more things about what's real and what's not as far as politics. Because it's amusing to see how people can just, I mean, they don't even have the eyes to put blinders on, but just political scandalous stuff where, you know, they want to ruin each other, which is kind of going to become, and I feel like it's almost too late, but people are starting to say, yeah, we're tired of the bickering and arguing and we want to get stuff solved. Dossier versus collusion, it's Two different realities. You've been hearing about the dirty, dirty, stinking, filthy dossier, Hillary Clinton dossier from Hannity for the last five years. And it led to impeachment in a roundabout way. And it led to people who have a preternatural hatred for a person to have some pretext to hate him. And it's been proven to be a total you know, fraud, and it's been proven that it's come from, it came from the very top, but that's not reality, because nothing's going to become of that. A few lower echelon idiots that nobody ever heard of are going to be arrested and given us fine and a suspended sentence, and that will be that. And it probably won't even be in history books, because people won't document, you know, the truth like that. They just... Collusion, you know, that's another reality that somebody else's non-reality. This guy who had nothing to do with the country, you know, is being accused of treason almost and impeached. And it was actually the other side that was colluding. I mean, if you look at the objective truth, but one person's reality is another person's fantasy. Insurrection versus anarchy. Now... How long can a tribe and the mouthpiece, the propaganda arm of a tribe, harp on about a minor incident? I mean, someone was killed, a policeman was killed, I mean, one of the protesters was killed, and the policeman, I believe, if I remember correctly, like died of a heart attack or whatever. But it was an insurrection, and... That's absurd. 
I mean, it was a protest, and it was rather dramatic because it was right there in the heart of it, right there in the Capitol building. But I think I've seen things in Capitol buildings before, and they weren't called insurrections, and they seemed a lot more rowdy. B-O-M, you know, Antifa. And whenever they get their dander up about something that they feel like their their, uh, female health issues are being trampled on, another issue, reality and non-reality, it's women's health. No, it's abortion. No, you, you said abortion. We said women's health. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to articulate. It's the morning. And there's a lot of crap that's happening vis-a-vis the end of the world. And I thought I'd catch you up a bit. First good news. Uh, Ahmad Masood is still around, and he's got his little band of heroes, to me, of the uh, National, whatever, Liberation Front, or whatever they call it, National... I didn't write it down. It's the rebels against the Taliban in Afghanistan, led by the son of the other rebel who got killed. And they're the good guys, but... And they're still there. I think that might be the most resilient. You know, study those guys and say, you know, how can we do like you do and just, you know persevere through everything. Okay, now here's what's happening that everybody should be afraid of right today, quickly. And I mean, like, get under your bed. Russia's locking down, China's locking down, okay? Xi, happiness, is urging all Chinese people to hoard as much as they can right now. That's what's happening right this minute, okay? You'll hear about it on the news in three or four days. 1,200 people plus died in one day in Russia from COVID. COVID's rising dramatically, and when you look at the footage in the other news, they're dressed up like it's a plague. And I'm thinking that we don't know what the hell's going on, do we? Anything could be happening. And we're just sitting by letting it happen and listening to somebody who has no business right now being in charge. Ukraine, India, Taiwan, Ethiopia. I could go on about that, but basically... Oh, and I was going to say, I hope this doesn't give it away. Ahmad Massoud is in Tajikistan because it's kind of dangerous for him in Afghanistan right now. So Tajikistan might be... One of the guys that might hold out for sanity and help. But what I wanted to say is Taiwan, India, Ukraine, Ethiopia, that's where they're amassing weaponry. I mean, China. China's sending rockets to the Indian border. China has already shown to be aggressive, have an aggressive presence for Ta- uh, on the Taiwan front which they feel it's owed to them. They feel they, it was theirs all along, so they need no pretext. I keep saying, it's going to happen in five years or six years. Everybody likes to say, down the line, we'll worry about it. Kick the can down the road. Hate that, because the road is either a wall or a cliff. But sooner or later, the wall ends. And then you kick the can against the wall, and you're squishing the can against it. And saying, you know, we want to keep kicking it. You know, let's raise the debt ceiling. Ethiopia is going to war with itself. And they, you know, seem like they were getting it together for a long time. But all those African countries, yeah, they're a mess. Sudan, Ukraine, Russia's amassing things against Ukraine, and they're going to Crimea and being very belligerent. So yeah, World War III is right around the corner. And apparently some virus, I don't know what it is, but they're dressing up in full body suits, and I'm thinking Nipah Hanipa because 
That's the one that's supposed to be very deadly. And it's by contact. So, I want to start your morning off on a high note. And that could be all my own reality, because, as I said in my last um, diatribe, which was brilliant, I didn't say the final thing that was my enlightenment. And, you know, everybody should think about it. The thing that came to me in a flash, when my wife was dying and I was up against it with everything, and I said, I'm the center of my own universe. And I realized that's it. I'm not going to be a sage. <clears throat> because I, you know, don't study enough. And I will say I've discovered I'm the center of my own universe. And everybody knows it's true for themselves. Because, and this is the proof and the logic that no one can dispute. The only person or the only entity that you're with all your life is yourself. You're never away from yourself. Even if you're schizophrenic or a split personality, you still embody the form, perception, conception, volition, and consciousness of your entity. So since you are the only person you're with your whole life, you are the center of your own universe. God, it's simple now that I think about it. And I wanted to fit that little bit of wisdom in there. It could be the most important thing ever said on the internet. So I'm proud of that. Proud in the proper sense of being proud. Because although I didn't come up with it, it dawned on me. And I realized why I caused the pandemic. And why I'm causing it now. But everybody is, in a way, when you look at it, the way I do. Everybody is the center of their own universe. And in their own universe, they created what we got. And I perceive it different from you, and that's why we have so much trouble. If we get together on our perception and our conception and volition, then yeah, the world will be much better. But that's going to be after the conflagration, and that's going to happen... Probably in four weeks, to be exact. So, I did a good one this time. I got a lot in there, and I'm happy. Because I think I figured it out. So I'll bid you adieu for today, and maybe I'll do another diatribe, because I want to do a lot more of this before the end. So, have a good day. Try to help someone. Bye.